Good morning, Mr. Levy. How are you? At this time, you would do your hand care and um, wash your hands or use the foam as well as put on gloves. My name's Valerie. I'm from Respiratory. Obtain your trach care kit, your uh, trach ties, and sterile water. And take your kit and open it up using sterile technique. Uh, first, uh, loosening up the cap on your sterile water. Taking the sterile glove packet out of the tray, do not contaminate anything from the inside. Using your sterile technique, which we've talked about before, open up the package. And in this case, what we will be doing is glove over glove. And the first glove, we're going to hold only the cuff, which, because it's folded over, is the inside of the glove. Line up your fingers. And, and on the second glove, what you're going to do is go under the cuff using your sterile glove, maintaining its sterility. And then with both hands now sterile, you're able to remove all of the items in your, your tray and place them right in the center of your sterile glove. Sterile glove um, package, you'll find two pipe cleaners. And uh, in this kit, five Q-tips a brush, um, a gauze, and a trach gauze. The trach gauze is the one that split, as well as a trach ties, and then also a sterile barrier. In this procedure, we're not going to be using the trach tie because we're going to use a, uh, a Velcro product, so uh, that can be uh, removed. All right. Now, what we are going to do is put the hydrogen peroxide, and since it's sterile, and since both hands are sterile, you carefully tear open and choose one of the uh, trays to pour that in. Careful not to touch anything that would be non-sterile. And that can go into your trash side right there. And then at this point, you are going to select the hand that you're going to use that will be dirty. And so you'll take your water and pour water into your tray. Remembering now the small is for hydrogen peroxide and the larger one is water. Yeah, you'll notice that they both look very similar. At this time is uh, when you would uh, take your sterile drape and place it over the patient's chest in the event you need an area to set something sterile down. At this point, what we've done is the uh, common elements of uh, hand washing and preparing our, uh, ourselves and introducing ourselves to the patient. Uh, you will want to make sure you have identified the size of the trach tube and airway in the event that you need uh, any supplies to go with that. You'll have opened the kit and filled basins with saline or water as well as hydrogen peroxide. And if needed, you will have also suctioned the trach. Okay, now you are going to uh, remove the uh, 
remove the dressings. Also, you want to make sure you have a uh, resuscitation bag and mask in the event that something goes wrong and you need to do uh, resuscitation bagging. Now, uh, removing the trach, you're going to take the uh, oxygen trach mask off and then uh, slowly and carefully removing the trach gauze and that'll slip out pulling downward noticing that the slot is going upward and at this point you're using your uh, dirty hand and now we are going to uh, begin the cleaning of the trach and so we will take a, uh, a q-tip with the sterile hand dip it in the hydrogen peroxide and take it and clean the underside of the flange not getting any of the hydrogen peroxide down the stoma removing any material that's there also noticing uh, the condition of the tissue under the flange and near the stoma. Now take a separate uh, Q-tip and clean the top side of the flange. Dip that also in hydrogen peroxide. and looking at the trach for any tissue, any redness, anything that would indicate issues. Now taking another Q-tip, this time you're going to dip it in the saline or sterile water and you're going to gently use that to remove the hydrogen peroxide because that can be irritating to the tissue and you want to just remove it from the tissue and try not to get anything down into the stoma. One of the things that will happen with the uh, hydrogen peroxide in the presence of protein it will begin to bubble and so that sometimes tells you um, that there's mucus and that type of stuff in the area or maybe even some some bleeding now if you have difficulty you can also use the pipe cleaners which sometimes for tight uh, trachs you'll want to dip that into the hydrogen peroxide or the uh, just a second hydrogen peroxide uh, or the saline depending and it allows you to bend it and reach around areas of the trach uh, but in this case there's plenty of uh, opening that uh, we were able to do everything with the, uh, the q-tips now got the, uh, the under the flange clean we're going to clean the uh, inner cannula in this case it is a reusable so you're going to unlock it and gently pull it out and place that in the hydrogen peroxide if the patient needs oxygen then uh, just simply put the oxygen back on the patient while you finish cleaning the uh, trach. So now that the uh, trach tube has been sitting in the hydrogen peroxide for a few seconds with your sterile hand you're going to take the brush and with um, your um, non-sterile hand you're going to grab a hold of the top of the trach tube and gently inserting the uh, brush down 
you will push it in and out much like you're cleaning a baby bottle removing anything that's stuck on the inside pushing any mucus out um, and you do that until you can't see any more mucus dip it back into the saline I mean into the hydrogen peroxide rinse it out one last time and then you're going to rinse it into the water or saline whichever you're using and just gently shake any excess water out and then you're going to reinsert that into the patient's trach tube and removing visually double check to make sure that it's in the lock place position you see the two dots will uh, line up indicating that it is locked to unlock you just simply rotate the opposite direction and locked back that prevents the trach intercannula from coming out now at this point what we're going to do will be to place the gauze underneath the uh, flange and you notice we have the slit facing up towards the patient's head it really doesn't matter it's just a matter of preference and most people do it in this manner work it gently under the flange and you can also do this at the same time you're removing the trach ties but that creates a little more concern about if the patient coughs at the time that the trach ties are removed they could potentially lose the trach too once you uh, get it under um, notice at this point all gloves are being treated as non-sterile okay now we're going to assemble the um, trach ties some assembly is necessary uh, depending on your brand uh, you'll want to make sure you know how it goes um, pull it apart and you will basically have two two sections of the trach just remove them from each other and then take the longer one and reach it around the back side of the patient just on a minute ahead here sir and position the uh, the velcro zip into approximate position where you'll need it and then bring the other portion the other half and place it on the velcro place the velcro in the right position so that your tie will not need much more adjusting okay now, now we're ready to remove the old tie and do you're going to do this uh, you can do both sides uh, of the old one and uh, keeping one hand on the trach flange and remove the ties of the old trach you'll notice that the velcro loves to grab your cloth so be aware
and remove the other side as well I'm disposing of the trach the old trach gauze trach uh, tie I should say remove the old trach tie and insert the new trach tie remember you don't want to over tighten that you want to have about a one to two finger looseness between there if it's too loose tighten it up a little bit and then uh, remove the old tie and your sterile drape and place the oxygen back on the patient if the uh, gauze is uh, bunched up just make sure you uh, straighten it up uh, make sure it's in a proper position and assure that the patient is comfortable and that their monitor settings are what they should be. That completes the trach care. Thank you.